This is lesson three, economic principles of Bitcoin. In this lesson, we'll be taking a look at the economic fundamentals of the Bitcoin money system and how that differentiates from our current economic systems. Let's begin. One of the first steps when we look at Bitcoin is recognizing that it is a deflationary, disinflationary money supply. And traditionally, our money systems and our national economies are characterized by inflationary money supply or money supply that loses purchasing power over time in relation to other goods and services. Something that is def inflationary will be less able to purchase the same amount of food, for example, tomorrow than it does today. For an example of this, throughout the 20th century, in the early 20th century, a US dollar was able to purchase roughly 90% more goods and services than it does today. This is because the US dollar is relatively an inflationary currency and over time it loses its purchasing power. Now this is necessary in an economy with a central banking institution such as America because if it was say a deflationary money system the debt of the US government would increase in its real value over time and this would put the government in perpetual debt and in an unsustainable position. Now Bitcoin's money supply is decreasingly inflationary or disinflationary in that it becomes less inflationary over time and to illustrate how this operates take a look at the graph on the right and we see that regularly as a scheduled event the block reward size or the new issuance of Bitcoin halves. So when we first began Bitcoin each new block contained 50 Bitcoin and then it halved to 25 then 12.25 then 6.25 and so on and so forth. This halving of issuance rate or this halving of the inflation rate will continue until the year 2140 when essentially the issuance rate is close to zero but not quite zero and this decreasing of the inflation rate is the disinflationary nature of Bitcoin. Looking at the supply schedule we can see that the rewards per block began at 50 and then have to 25 then 12.25 then 6.25 3.125 and so on and so forth and if you look near the bottom in the year 2040 each new block will contain 0 0.19531250 bitcoin you can see this disinflationary effect in action Now another interesting characteristic when we look at Bitcoin is money velocity and money velocity describes the rate at which money units change hands and because of the digital nature of Bitcoin we can expect that when people use this form of money and also because there is no administration that needs to approve transactions there is essentially no delay bef between sending and receiving money we can expect the money velocity to increase sharply in the years to come. This low friction method of payment allows money to move at a higher velocity. And traditionally economists will describe an increase in money velocity as a very good thing because more people have access to the same amount of money and are able to reduce delays which cause friction in the economy. Could we eventually see business conducted at the speed of thought? With Bitcoin, it's possible. This brings us to the conclusion of our lesson today. To get an in-depth reading on Bitcoin's economic principles, take a look at our analysis at diginomics.com slash Bitcoin's Game Changing Economic Principles, where we go over what we have discussed today in more depth. That's it for today's lesson. We'll see you in the next one.